Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Nicole Gaffney, and we're here today at PBS 39 Studios at the Steel Stacks campus in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And joining us in the kitchen is Chef Lee Chismar of Bolit. Hi, Nicole. Great to have you here, uh, as always. Thanks so much. It's always a pleasure. I love the look of some of these ingredients we have. What are we making? So we're actually going to make, I kind of call this a lasagna, mm -hmm. um, but it's really, it's a great dish because you can pick it up in one pan. Nice. Um, and it's sort of a loose interpretation on the dish. Mm -hmm. um, and it's simple and it, it tends to really please the crowd. So We like simple crowd pleasers. All right. Let's excellent. start. All right. Well, first I'm going to come over here. Um, and we are just going to start searing some mushrooms, mm -hmm. and that's kind of going to be the base to our sauce here. A lot of different varieties over here. Can yeah. you tell me about them? So we have, uh, these are cremini, mm -hmm. uh, royal trumpets. Wow. We have piopini. Piopini, that's a new one. Hen of the woods, mm -hmm. oyster mushrooms, and some little shiitakes. Nice. Uh, and these are all local, locally grown in Pennsylvania. What's the piopini um, like? So, you know, it has really great mushroom flavor. Mm -hmm. It's really nice because you can use the whole stem. Yeah, they look um, like shiitake stems where they'd be kind of woody, but yeah, they're not. Yeah, and they're super tender. Nice. Um, and they actually make a great dish, especially for something like this when you're, it is simple, it gives it a little bit of height and some more texture to it, so it's it's pretty nice. Awesome. So, um, so the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm just going to go ahead and turn this up. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of when we're cooking uh, the mushrooms, some of them have, this is actually, it's a little bit of garlic oil, so we have a little bit of moisture yeah, in there. Yeah, I can smell that a yeah. little. So the different mushrooms have different moisture content, and when we're going to cook them all together, I'll kind of start with probably my creminis okay. because they're pretty hearty and mm -hmm. they're, they're going to give off a little bit of liquid. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple of those. Watch yourself on the hot oil Thank there. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then the royal trumpets are kind of the same. Um, they have a little bit of moisture to them, um, and so we're just going to go ahead and get these guys in. Um, one of the things when I'm making a sauce, especially with the mushrooms, mm -hmm. is Sometimes um, it's good to season the mushrooms at the end okay. because they're going to kind of pull out a lot of the moisture. Sure. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get some salt in these guys just to kind of get that started. Okay, so you want that to happen. Yeah, so then we can add the rest of the mushrooms. So All right. I'm just going to grab Great. some salt right here. And you can kind of just watch and you'll be able to hear the change in the oil. See right there, you can kind of see there's oh, kind of yeah. moisture starting to come out of those. Definitely. Um, so I'm just going to cook these guys down. And I'm getting a little bit of color there. Mm -hmm. um, and so now I'm going to go ahead and start adding the rest of them. Um, Head of the Woods, which these are kind of my favorite. You know, they really have that earthy kind yeah. of forest flavor. Um, and I love almost, the look of them, too. I feel like they really, um, they almost have a soy quality, that really huh. umani flavor yeah. that mushrooms kind of give off, which is really great. So we'll add a couple extra of these just because they're not? so good. <laughs> Um, and then we'll do our oyster mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And so what we're kind of doing here is I'm basically, I call this a caramelized onion broth that obviously is very heavy on mushrooms. Right. Um, so once we get these guys in, um, we're just going to saute them down. And then over here I have some caramelized onions. I see those. Those are beautifully caramelized. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. So these take um, almost... For us to get these to look like this mm -hmm. and really have that caramel flavor, they take about two hours. Wow. Um, and so one of the things that we do is we start them in a very hot pan, mm -hmm. get them in there, stir them a lot, wait till that moisture starts to kind of come out. Right, break them down a yeah. bit. Yeah, and then once we start to get a little bit of color, we'll turn it super low. Okay. And just stir as much as we yeah. can. Yeah. And then really they just cook down to that beautiful color. And I notice you're being really careful not to put too many mushrooms in that pan. You have well, a lot of space. And you can see we're, we're getting this really great caramelization. If you put too many mushrooms in the pan, mm -hmm. the moisture is going to come out and then yep. it's just going to end up steaming. Yeah. All right? And so that... You lose so much flavor. Really, to capture that flavor of those mushrooms, you want that caramelization of them, mm -hmm. which is really, I think, kind of the key component to this, this dish, especially since it's so simple. Sure. Um, so all about the technique. Of, yep, all about the technique. All right, so as this is cooking down, I'm just going to come in here and slice a little bit of garlic. All right. Um, or a lot of garlic, depending <laughs> on how you feel about it. I like it. a lot of garlic. Yeah. It's good for your immune system this <laughs> yeah. time of year, too. And so, I remember you telling me about your garlic technique before. Yeah, and so as you can see, we're using the back slice here. Mm -hmm. um, and really what that, that does, as long as you have a very sharp knife, um, it's slicing the cells of the garlic mm -hmm. rather than tearing them, which gives you um, a cleaner flavor. Mm -hmm. It's not just gonna, the garlic's not just gonna overpower your sauce. Right. So it's kind of cool, you can use a little bit more of it, 
Um, and one of the things at the restaurant that we always do when we use garlic like this, we always cut it to order. Oh, um, wow. We don't ever go ahead and cut too much. Um, and what that does is it keeps that really simple flavor. And so usually if you're doing it just like this, I think some people would say, oh, you just use a whole clove of garlic. Right. But you'll taste at the end, it, it tends to be a lot more mild and yeah. you have better control over it. Stay tuned for more of The Chef's Kitchen. We'll return with more from The Chef's Kitchen. I'm gonna go ahead and add some of our caramelized onions. And the reason that I'm doing that is I don't wanna burn my garlic. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add these guys in. And what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna cool down the pan a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you can kind of see, you can just smell all that caramelization. Oh, yeah. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add some garlic to that. And I'm just gonna give it a little shot, a little bit more oil. Okay, so now I'm just gonna add a little bit of thyme here. And I like to add my herbs kind of in the beginning, especially with the thyme, mm -hmm. to really blend all that stuff together. And so now I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna grab a little bit of white wine. And usually whenever I add alcohol, I tend to bring my pan away from the heat mm -hmm. um, because a lot of times, you know, you can have that flare up. And, and you don't want the flambe. You don't want the, okay. yeah, we don't want the flambe. Ever or just in this instance? Well, really, so sometimes with alcohol it's okay, um, but one of the things, especially with mushrooms, if we're really searing them hard and you have a lot of water content in there, you throw it in, mm -hmm. if it gets close to the flame, if you're cooking with gas, it can kind of reach the flash point. Right. And you're basically, what those flames do is they basically add carbon. Oh, to the dish, huh. and that's really not something that you want. I'm also doing this because, while I've never experienced it, I have heard horror stories of bottles catching on fire and things mm -hmm. like that. So I usually tend to pour whatever alcohol I'm using uh, into a different container, and then that Very way, <laughs> yeah, if something crazy happens, you'll still be all right. And what was this? So that was sherry. Okay. All right, which I think is really great. Now you're really getting that aroma. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just gonna kind of separate these guys. They tend to clump up. Yeah. And so we're just about where we want here. You can really... Oh, sherry smells just, amazing. Yeah, and, it, and it just really blends everything, everything together. Yeah. So next, I have here mushroom stock. Mm -hmm. um, you could do uh, veg stock. You could do water if you wanted because these okay. caramelized onions are going to have so much flavor. Sure. Um, so now I'm just going to go ahead and add this. And we'll add a little bit extra. And so now, we're just gonna let this simmer. And we're gonna come over, and we're gonna start working on our pasta. Awesome. All right? Okay, so, here I have a porcini pasta that we made. Um, and really, it's egg yolks, eggs, a little bit of white wine. I tend mm -hmm. to add that for, uh, to keep it huh. from oxidizing. Really? A little bit of olive oil, mm -hmm. um, and then a high gluten flour. All so right? like a bread flour? Yeah. Okay. And then I take a little bit of dried porcinis, I grind them up really fine, and kind of fold that is right Is that what in. this is? That is. I yeah. smelled that and yeah. was, that's not white pepper. <laughs> no. <laughs> and so we're going to taste that later. Sometimes it's nice to use a little bit of that powder in okay. the broth itself to kind of give it a little extra oomph. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm just going to start here. I have a little bit of bread flour here, um, and I'm just going to dust this a little bit. And then I have this kind of worked into a rectangle, and then I'm just going to kind of roll this out. And basically what I'm trying to do is get it thin enough to go through our largest setting here uh, in the pasta machine. You want it to be thin enough so that it doesn't bunch up. Sometimes if it's too thick, you can get your pasta will just kind of clump up on you and, and tear, which you don't really want. And always just yolks, never full eggs? So I do, for this recipe actually, I do 13 uh, egg yolks and two whole eggs. Oh wow, yeah, and how much flour are we talking? 18 ounces Okay. <laughs> All right, so I just about have this thin enough. And so we're just gonna come right over here and we're gonna just start kind of cranking it through. Usually this first spin um, is kind of the toughest. Okay. All right. And you're gonna keep this in one big long sheet or are you yeah. gonna cut this? So I'm actually gonna keep this in one long sheet. Wow. It's really nice to have this really nice perfect sheet without tears on the side. Sure. 
And so one of the things that I've learned over the years, because we've rolled a lot of pasta, <laughs> um, what I like to do is take this, flip it right around. Whoa. Right. That just blew my mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so usually what I do is I'll try to go through each setting twice. All right, and I'll do that one three times just because we kind of added that to it. You just changed my pasta yeah. making game so forever. <laughs> now, where I joined it mm -hmm. is that's kind of my line. So okay. I know, okay, that was one time. Right, right. And then I'll just kind of keep. And that line sort there. of stays intact or does it disappear after a it while? It will, you, you can always kind of tell where it is. Okay. So. This is a, such a great technique. Yeah. I love this. All right, so. As we're doing this, you can see that the dough is starting, it's nice and dry right now, but mm -hmm. as we get thinner, um, it's going to probably take a little bit more flour. Um, so that's one of the things. And then I'm just gonna take a little light dust of bread flour. And what does using the high gluten bread flour do? Does it give you it know, a better structure? It, it definitely gives it better structure. Um, it holds up a little bit nicer. Mm -hmm. uh, it really has that really great kind of tooth Tube, texture. Yeah. yeah. We'll return with more from the Chef's Kitchen. We're back with more from the Chef's Kitchen. I'm just kind of keeping a little bit of pressure with my hand. Mm -hmm. um, Stretch and, it a little. Yeah, and so what happens if you don't do that, as you're thinning, you can kind of see it's going to end up getting too wide. Yeah. And then that can cause problems. So I just leave a little pressure on it. I usually take it down to two. I'll go through one time at two. So this is at three, and you can see the difference now. Yeah. This is where it's really going to start to increase in length. So you can just see how much it's increased just with that one. Oh, totally. One setting. There. This is amazing. Yeah. And so now, as we get too long, one of the things that I'll do is I'll just come in and I'll fold it. You do fresh pasta at Belite a lot. Yep, uh, uh, it's usually always on the menu somewhere. Okay. Um, whether it's fettuccine or raviolis mm -hmm. or um, this, you know, whole sheet lasagna. Things and like all that. on this little machine. All on the little that's machine. That's a good workout. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For sure. All right, so that's that's my time down to one time on two. Wow. All right, so what I'll do is I'll just come in here and I tend to fold it over on top of itself. All right, and then I have a little pasta wheel. I'll just kind of cut this down, mm -hmm. and then that's it. So for this dish, I'm probably just going to take a section just like that. All that work, and we're only using this? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully we'll be able to cook a little for some of uh, the people. For the, the whole show. crew. Yeah, for the whole crew. Okay. So what so, is happening at Belit? So lately, we, with Lehigh Valley Style, um, we, I always say we, but I won uh, Favorite Chef of Lehigh Valley. Congratulations. Which is nice. Fantastic. And, uh, we love Lehigh Valley Style Magazine. Well, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's one of the best in the Lehigh Valley sure for is. sure. I'm just going to add a little bit of sage to this. Oh, wow. And I think we're probably close enough that if you want to sprinkle a little of the shredded Parmesan in there. What's your idea of a little? Well, I'm going to leave it up to you because I have a feeling that you're. That, that you I love really a little like bit. <laughs> a Parmesan cheese. <laughs> I'm just doing a little bit of chiffonade here with the sage. I'll go easy. All right. And the sage is kind of nice. It goes so well mm -hmm. uh, with the mushrooms. Um, and you know what? Let's add a little bit of rosemary, too. OK. All right. Now, I noticed that you did the back slice with the sage also. Yeah. And that's really a great technique you know, with the chiffonade, because you can get this really beautiful sage. Yeah. It doesn't it's bruise nice. it. It doesn't bruise it. Beautiful. All right. It really retains the color. Yeah, yeah. And this will cook down a little bit, but we're getting close enough that. So I'm just going to add as this, and this is another thing. Um, you can concentrate this as much as you want. Mm -hmm. So we could take two quarts of mushroom stock and simmer it down. Yeah. And you're going to get a really concentrated caramelized onion broth. I mean, the flavor from what I tasted is so concentrated. Yeah. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of sherry vinegar, mm -hmm. which is going to help that acid is going to help bring all those flavors together and help. Uh, your body and your mouth actually taste the broth even a little bit more. Nice. A little bit of lemon juice. Here. Same idea there. Same with the idea. Acid. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of spin this around. I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of garlic oil. So this is our really nice country style sourdough bread that we make Making at the, the restaurant. House, yep. yep. And so we'll just go ahead and get that right in there. 
and I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of salt. All right, so now this is coming back up to a simmer. This looks spectacular. All right. Now, are you going to actually cook the pasta in this broth? I am. I ah, am. I've noticed there's no boiling water on right. the stove. And so one of the cool things about this pasta, especially because it's so fresh, mm -hmm. it's going to cook very quickly. And it's nice because it's also going to absorb all of that flavor. Oh, yeah. Um, so I think really quickly, I'm just going to add some greens. And I like to add a lot of fresh greens to this, uh, just to kind of also give it a little depth. This is a little baby Swiss chard, okay. which is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have a little bit of spinach over here. What are these? These are interesting. So that is a tacana, uh, which is actually a green mustard green, mm. which really kind of that pepperiness mm -hmm. um, really oh, adds yeah. a lot to the dish. It takes here. a minute, but you get that mustard green yeah. flavor. All right, so I think we're ready. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'll cut one more sheet of pasta here just to make sure we have enough. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> Um, and then if you could, if you just want to hold this one. Sure thing. And then one of the things that I do here is I kind of, I'll give this a little stir. It's so thin, but it's it's sturdy. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm going to rip it. And that's part of that higher gluten flour, too. Yeah. It helps really keep it together. So one of the things that I like to do is I just kind of will slide this in. And this is kind of that whole lasagna-esque, mm. you know, where I'm separating. Just kind of layer. Yeah, just kind of layer, layer it through. Wow. Oh, you can see how the pasta's wilted so much yeah. just from hitting that liquid. And so one of the things, too, I'm putting liquid in between mm -hmm. um, just so sometimes it can clump up on you. Okay. Um, and so, and now, as you look, um, you can just feel it's already kind of cooking down. Stay tuned for more of The Chef's Kitchen. We're back with more from The Chef's Kitchen. So I'm just going to turn this down a little bit. And you really can see how the starch has gotten in there to thicken that up just yeah. a little bit. So there's our toast. And right there. And now, now that it's just about finished, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of tacana here. Um, and then I always really love, parsley is one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. uh, it just has that really green, clean, yeah, you know, very kind fresh. Of, yeah. So we're going to add a little bit of fresh parsley. And do you always use the flat leaf parsley? We do. Exclusively. Yeah, pretty much. And then we'll do it different ways, whether we chiffonade it or mince mm -hmm. it or just do that back leave slice. Whole, yes, <laughs> the back slice too. All right. This is such a cool dish. It's kind of neat. Yeah, it know? really is. And simple. It is. Would you ever consider adding cream or even butter to finish so, that? Oh, well, that's actually another good point. So, so far we haven't used any butter at all. Yeah. Um, and and so, not in the caramelized onions either. Right. So, this dish is really great, you know, especially if if you're looking to cut out the butter. Mm -hmm. As you tasted the broth before, you almost Buttery. don't need it. Yeah, you really you know, don't. It just has that really umani flavor from mm -hmm. the mushrooms and the caramelized onions. All right, so I think we're ready to plate it up. Let's do it. All right. So this gets a little tricky. This is probably the trickiest okay. part. <laughs> Only because... Neither had to be a catch. Yeah. Um, and that's basically just getting the pasta down to the bowl itself. Okay. Um, do you want me to grab the bowl? Uh, yeah, or, or we can go over there. I think we're probably going to need a little more if you want to grab the peeler uh, mm -hmm. and some nice whole pieces of Parmesan. One thing that I did forget that I think really makes a nice finish to this is just a little bit of truffle oil. Oh, right. very nice. Yeah. White truffle oil? Uh, that's actually black truffle oil. Okay. Yeah. So, all right, shall we go right over? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so the only tricky part with this is you always want to watch out. Oh, I can smell that truffle yeah. oil. So I'm just going to drop this guy right in. And so now that's, you have beautiful layers. Mm -hmm. So now I can come in and add a little bit more garnish here. We'll get all those mushrooms. I'm going to slide this noodle over. Oh, this smells amazing. Oh, thank you. Well, hopefully it tastes as good as it smells. I have a feeling it's going to. <laughs> we drop that Everything right you make there. here does. Oh, thank you so much, Nicole. Is this on the menu currently? Well. We can always make it. Okay. Um, so just because I'm not even joking, it was last weekend that we oh, did really? it for the first time. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. So hopefully it, it is going to be making a, a stay on the menu for a little while. All right. And so is this? You, yeah, go ahead. Shred it on. All right. Yep, peel is a little this bit on Reggiano it. or Grana? Or? Yep, that's Reggiano. And I always like to garnish with a little bit of microgreens. Perfect. All right. 
And so here we have a little shungiku and a little bit of purslane. Purslane, that used to be a weed. Now all of yeah, I know. Now, on menus all over the place. Now you pay a lot of money for it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this looks fantastic. I can't wait to try this. So please join me. All right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to attack this thing. I know. Thing. This is, it could be very messy. Well, messy is okay All with right, me. All right, here it goes. Mmm. I'm even a little surprised. Are you? <laughs> it's pretty Like, tasty. it's that good? <laughs> that little pop of that sherry vinegar at the end yeah. really, really brings out those flavors. Yeah. Wow. The pasta is so tender. Really cooked nicely. Thank you. Mmm. I could take this thing and polish this off, no problem. <laughs> Thanks again for being with us Thanks. on The Chef's Thanks Kitchen. I hope us. everything's great at Belief. We'll come and see you again soon. All right, please do. The Lehigh Valley's premier hotel, Historic Hotel Bethlehem, is perfect for any stay. Offering two restaurants by notable chef Michael Adams, 1741 on the terrace, an upscale dining experience, and the tap room, a casual restaurant. Guests enjoy 24-hour room service, along with the shop at Hotel Bethlehem, featuring Penn State Creamery ice cream, and offering the finest in accessories. Two beautiful ballrooms and ample meeting space make Historic Hotel Bethlehem the place to host your next event. Stay with us at Historic Hotel Bethlehem and feel at home. Well, I love coming and cooking on Chef's Kitchen um, because it, one, gives me a chance to get out of the kitchen and it gets to I get to share what I love to do every day uh, with people. Um, that's what it's really all about for me.